Hello, my old school soul food family. Chef Jeffy back with another video. All right, y'all. So it's time for some Sunday dinner idea recipe favorites. Let me show y'all something here. I got from the butcher shop about three or four weeks ago, maybe a month ago. See these here? I call these breakfast chops. See how thin they are? And to me, there's only one way to eat these things. Growing up, we used to kill a hog. And we should have the chops come out like this. We went to the had the took to the uh the butcher or the processor. I don't want them grilled. Number one, you grill them, they're gonna just be tough. They're just not the same. They don't have a lot of fat content on these. See how lean they are? Only thing do is to smother them in the skillet with onions and gravy, eat it with right rice. What about that? Don't that sound good? Of course you can grill them, or you can fry them too, but the best way. It just smother them right on top of the stove. You never see me smother stuff on top of the stove too much. Usually I do it in the instant pot. Or I put it in the uh, Dutch oven. And put it in the oven. But this one I'm going to do it right in my cast iron skillet. See my cast iron skillet right there? And I'm going to smother them right on top of the stove. With some onion gravy, y'all. Just like mama used to do. She didn't, she didn't have no Dutch oven back in the day. Or of course she didn't have no instant pot. So what I'm gonna do, y'all, let's get this one right here. I'm gonna show y'all something too. Y'all know my mama gave me this plate years ago and I still got it. Got a little nick right there. But y'all see that? You don't see them kind of old school plates no more. And I got a few of them up here too, y'all. I'm gonna go through them one day and show y'all these old plates that mama gave me when I first went to college. Here, baby, you need some place for your apartment. <laughs> so yeah, I still use them. I need me to do more present more food on them, huh? They really look old school. Get them old school plates like that, but anyway, let's get these seasoned up, y'all. Put a little salt and pepper on them. You know, I use palm pepper. Y'all already know if you're new here, I do not use a lot of seasoning, y'all. I'm very adamant. Don't put a lot of seasoning on your food. Put enough on it just to enhance, especially with meat. That's just a pet peeve of mine. People over season their food with 12, 14. I, I still think you don't need maybe three or four spices for your food. If you put more than three or four, I think you're overdoing it. That's just personal press of mine as a chef. Growing up as a chef in the chef industry, we don't we got soap on my uh, <laughs> spatula, y'all. Somebody gonna say, oh, you put soap on your food, you got. <laughs> it ain't gonna kill you, y'all. Those soap suds on your meat there ain't gonna kill you. If it would kill you, you wouldn't be washing your dishes in it. That's why I tell people, oh, some people don't like seeing my Don dishwashing. I know Polish, I know you love it, but some one lady was offended. You shouldn't have no dishwashing soap near your food. <laughs> really? Oh my God. Same people say you shouldn't uh, marinate your meat in the sink. Your sink should be one of the cleanest, if not the cleanest item in your kitchen should be your kitchen sink. If your kitchen sink is dirty and unsanitary, you got an issue. It should be your most sanitized thing in the kitchen. You know my sink is sanitized with bleach and soap on a daily basis. Many it should be, another thing, it should be clean 20 times a week, maybe more than that. So people say, oh, and, and let me tell you another thing. I'm on a pet peeve this morning. Ain't I? You ever been in the work in the industrial kitchen? A lot of people don't know what they be saying, they don't know what they be eating. Big kitchen sink in the kitchen, in the big huge kitchen, that's one of the most used things for marinating meats and uh, cleaning and, 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 and seasoning meats is the kitchen. Because it's the most cleanest thing in the kitchen because it has chemicals, been cleaned with chemicals and, and, and stuff like that to make it absolutely sanitary. Health inspectors, when they come into your kitchen, they're going to look at your kitchen sink. They're going to look at that sink, y'all. So I'm just letting you know, all you people out there offended by uh, dishwashing soap and kitchen sink. You must have been cooking that long or something. You listen to young people. It's usually young people that say that. The old school, old heads like me, they already know. So I'm usually talking to the young cooks out there. Yeah. So anyway, now I got that season up there. And all I'm going to do, y'all, I'm going to scrim around here and I'm going to cut while I was talking. I should have had my skillet on. See what y'all do when y'all have me a hammer. Get the, I get on one of them rants. So I'm gonna heat my uh, 
cast iron skillet. Now, another little tip I didn't tell y'all when I was seasoning my cast iron skillet. Make sure you bring the temperature up low. Don't turn your temperature all the way high when you have a cast iron skillet because it's going to warp, not warp your skillet. It's just going to make the seasoning and your uh, longevity of your skillet not last as long. Always bring the temperature up very low. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little oil in here. All I'm going to do when this come up to temperature, y'all, I just want to sear this on both sides. I got some flour in my bag here. And uh, I'm going to sear this on both sides. And take it off. Put the onions in there. Just like I do in the uh, cast iron, I mean in the uh, Dutch oven. Same procedure. Only thing, I'm not putting this in the oven. I'm going to put the lid, I'm going to cast it out. Put the lid on here and just let it simmer on top of the stove. Just like my mama used to do. Of course, she didn't have no lid. What did she use? She used a lid that kind of would fit it. Why she put some? What did she put? Some foil on it. So anyway, y'all, we'll be right back once my skillet heat up. All right, y'all, we back. Okay, y'all, all I'm doing, I'm going to got y'all focus on the skillet. That's okay. Y'all focus on the skillet there. I'm going to just shake and shake and shake, shake. Y'all already know my shake method in my in my uh, bag. I just got a little flour on the pork chop. And all I'm going to do, y'all, just sear them off in the skillet here. I'm going to get them brown on both sides. Nothing special about it. Oh, actually, this is my first time using this skillet. I mean, my brand new skillet. Y'all saw me season about two or three weeks ago. So I'm, uh, the reason I'm using this is because it has a lid on it. So we're going to see how it comes out. Did I do a good job of seasoning my skillet? And I'm going to prove to you how well the skillet is seasoned. Nothing should stick. Soon as I say that, watch everything stick. But nothing should stick. I should never have to wash the skillet again. I mean, I'm going to wash it, you know, with a little soap and water, but I should never have the season again, ever. Yeah, so. Anyway, y'all, brown it on both sides, and I'm going to get them all browned off. I'm going to come back, and I'm going to show you the next step. We'll be right back. I guess I'll let y'all go a little bit. A lot of people have a, have a little, which I understand. Some people have a little therapy by hearing stuff fry. This is like them ASMR videos. Some, sometimes the sound of certain things is therapy for people. Like me, the sound of a fan going when I'm sleeping is therapy for me. The sound of sitting and listening to the ocean is therapy for me. What, running water, like my uh, fish aquarium you hear in the background, it's, it's therapy for me. So some people it's therapy for just listening to stuff fry. So, to each his own. So we're going to see how the other side looks here. Like I say, they don't have to be perfectly golden brown, y'all. Put a little sear on them. A little sear. Because we're going to brown it off later on with that good gravy. See that? That's what you want. So anyway, y'all, we'll be right back when I get them all browned off. All right, y'all, we back here. All right. See how pretty those are? We're going to take these out of here. And see, I ain't even putting it on a rack, y'all. I'm putting it right on the plate. All right. Now, them onions there. I'm going to put them onions right in that oil. It might look like a lot of oil bomb. Once I get to sauteing onions in it, and then I'm going to put my, you know, the dirty flour lady put on a, make an appearance today, y'all. Put my dirty flour in there in a minute. I need that oil there to make my making my roux right in the skillet. And it's gonna be on it's all one pot. You make you ain't gotta mess up nothing else. Just one thing, one skillet thing here. So you get all that roux around. So I'm gonna cook these off y'all about about two or three. Might have a couple of minutes here. I want these to get nice and soft. You know, you can use mushrooms. Some people like mushrooms. I like mushrooms too, but I don't keep a lot on hand. Onion is a staple in my pantry. I always have onions. But I use a lot of onions in different cooking. 
and uh, you can put celery if you want. Some people put carrots in it. I mean, the, 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 it's unlimited what you can uh, what you can put in there. It's gonna get all this soaked up. I need all that residual oil in there, y'all, because the dirty flour lady get up. Honey, honey, we can get get here. We using this dirty flour. Here we go, y'all. Here we go. We're going to put that dirty flour in there. Dirty flour. All the thing dirty flour is, if people new to the channel, it's flour I use from the pork chops. Same flour. Some people think that's unsanitary. Some people say you shouldn't be doing that. But it is what it is, y'all. I'm, I'm tired of fighting with people about it. So that's what the dirty flour lady come in at. Okay. A bit more flour in there. I want the gravy thick, but I don't want it too thick because this cooking on top of the stove. If you get the gravy too thick, it's going to burn. It's going to start sticking and burning on you. All right. A little bit more flour in there. We're going to get our chicken stock here ready. I'm going to put some chicken stock in here, y'all. Yeah, people say, why do you use chicken stock? They make pork stock. They do make pork stock, but in the food industry, even in my house, I use more chicken and beef stock than I would pork stock. That's why I don't buy any. Okay. And I want to get a little color on this too, y'all. I want to get a little color on this. Y'all watching that, I'm making my, one thing I'm doing, I'm getting some chicken bouillon, y'all. I'm mixing it with water. I'm gonna make my chicken stock like that. That's all I'm doing. Okay. See how I'm getting a little color on that gravy? See how that flour getting a little bit more color on it? All right. Let me put a little bit more flour in here, y'all. There's a thin line here between not enough and too much. Like I said, I wanted the gravy to be thick, but not too thick. Remember, you got some residential, residential, residual <laughs> coming off the pork chops as well. You got some flour on that as well, so, yeah. One second here. Alrighty. Look at that, y'all. Definitely got to get that nice color on it. Put that natural color on it. Okay, now. All I'm going to do now, I'm going to throw my, my stock in here. Definitely don't want to put too much more in here because remember, we got to add our pork chops back to this. I'm going to turn this down. Now we want to do, to do is simmer this. See that? Now I'm going to season this too. Let me get my, let me get my rubber back. Like they say in the chef industry, get to use the right tool for the right Use the right tool for the job, right? Alrighty. There we go. I don't want to add too much more stock to this, y'all, because <clears throat> then we got to add our pork chops to this. I got to add some salt and pepper. 
all them pepper to this. And then, you know, the moisture from the pork chop is gonna help thin it out just a little. We got that natural gravy there. Now, put some Worcestershire sauce in here, AKA, <clears throat> American soy sauce. Come on, Kenny, Worcestershire sauce. Y'all help BCK out, Box K Kenner. He called it the W sauce. Worcestershire sauce, Kenny. We're gonna put Kenner in a class and make him say it a hundred times. So, uh, you'll know how to say it. That's okay, Kenner. I at least you can admit it. I can't spell it. Gun to my head, I can't spell it. When I'm typing it in my recipes, spell check don't even help you out with it, y'all. That's crazy. Spell check should help you out with it. It won't help you out with it, so. Y'all see me misspell it, don't hate on me. Okay. Let's see here. All right. Grave is good. Then put a little black pepper in it. <clears throat> The only time you'll see me put black pepper in anything. I know I'm not a fan of black pepper. Okay. That's it, y'all. Now, we're going to put our pork chops back in here. And see if we can get them all fit in here. <clears throat> get them all in here, y'all. Y'all think they're going to all fit in here? They're going to all fit. Well, yeah, they're going to all definitely fit in here. And what I'm going to have to do, y'all, uh, I'm going to have to kind of move them around. Put the sauce on top. We've got to move them around here. <clears throat> every, every, maybe every 10, 15 minutes, I'm going to come in here. And I'm gonna uh, put the buns on the top, top on the bottom, stuff like that. Even though I got a lid on it, just to make sure they all cooking evenly. Well, other than that, we're gonna turn this down, put this lid on here, y'all, and we're gonna let it do its thing. So we will be right back. All right, y'all, we're back. We are halfway through the process here, y'all. Let me show y'all what I got here. And I got this on a low simmer, y'all. See that nice gravy? See how it's thinned out a little? Because that's the moisture from the pork chop is going to thin it out a little. Now I've switched the ones on the bottom to the top to make sure they cook evenly. But well, look at that, y'all. All on top of the skillet. And I got this on a barely, barely, barely uh, fire on. And you see how that's going. So you don't want to have it on too, too high. See how that nice gravy? See that? Nice brown gravy there. So yeah, that's gonna go another, maybe another 30 minutes. I'm gonna just let it simmer, just like that. Just like mama used to do. Right on top of the stove. I got me some rice back here. Let me show y'all. <clears throat> got some rice back there, y'all. You see that? I got me some nice hot buttered rice back there. I got me some corn. Look at that nice corn there. It's gonna be on here, y'all. Like I say, y'all, this is a nice Sunday after church dinner. Uh, I don't usually, I already know, I don't usually uh, cook pork chops on top of the stove. I usually do it on my Instant Pot or I do it in the oven, in the Dutch oven. A lot of people don't have that. I just reached back in the archive. A lot of people don't have that. A lot of people just have the regular old can. I know everybody, know all these old school cooks like us, uh, we definitely got a cast iron skillet. And I know, you know, I did a video on the seasoning the cast iron skillet, so... With the lid, I said I just might well use it and show people how well they season and how good it is. So I know everybody have that. So we used to cooking back in the day on top of the stove. So that's what I'm doing today. So after church, you come home, you do this on a Saturday night, leave it in your skillet after church to cut that skillet back on like my mama used to do. You put you some rice on. Rice don't take 15, 20 minutes. Put some corn, vegetable, green beans on. Some cornbread and just put you to sleep on this. On this. <laughs> After watching, if you watch football like I do, 
And when you get this video, I'll be at the Cowboys game. They play this Sunday. They play in the, uh, I call them Redskins. I, they play in Washington, 12 noon. So I'm going to go to probably P.D. Jake Church and have that outside of Arlington after I leave church ride right, right into the game. So anyway, y'all fall asleep on me. Think about me as you're eating them good old uh, skillet pork, skillet, uh, cast iron skillet smothered pork chops, y'all. So anyway, y'all, we'll be right back when these are ready. All right, y'all, we back again here. Let's open this up. Look at that, y'all. I'm gonna go on and turn this off, y'all. I'm gonna get my knife here, stick in there. Oh my God, these things are so tender, y'all. It took about, about an hour, a little bit of under an hour. I say 50 minutes on these, cause they so thin. Of course, common sense say, if they thicker, it's gonna take more time. But you see that good gravy, look at that. See that? I don't know y'all thought that uh, the gravy was too thick when I was doing it. They didn't, they didn't stick. So what I'm gonna do, y'all, I'm gonna step off here, get me a plate. Look at that gravy, y'all, look at that. Look at that nice gravy. Homemade gravy, right in the skillet, y'all. Like I tell people, don't buy packaged gravy. Because you can make your own right in the skillet. So I'm gonna step off, y'all, get my plate up. And you know what's about to happen in here. We're gonna come back, have some some skillet, some skillet of, uh, uh, smothered pork skillet. How I'm gonna do it? Skillet smothered pork chops. Give me some rice, rice, some corn here. And it's on, y'all. So anyway, y'all, we'll be right back. All right, y'all, we are back here. Look at this here, y'all. Look at this here. That's a plate of Sunday goodness right there, ain't it? Sunday goodness right there. Put me a little hot sauce on there. Gotta have me some hot sauce, y'all. Put me a little Louisiana hot sauce on there. Okay. This could be fork tender, y'all. Look at that. Could be fork tender there. Look at that. Look at that. You don't even need a knife, y'all. Mm -hmm. That's the fat. Let me go to the meat over here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got the fat part right there. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm. Look at that, y'all. Look at that. Mm. A little rice here. A little pork. Mm. Look at that bite right there, y'all. Mm, mm, mm. Got me over my tripod here. Only Kenner know the know the agony of that. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. That's why. One more bite here, y'all. I like to cook them in the skillet, these thin ones, because there's a lot, a lot of fat on them. Mm. And, um, mm. <clears throat> and they tend to dry out on you. If you just fry them or grill them. So we usually just smother them. Right. Get no better than this. Good old smothered pork. Uh -huh. Some white rice. Some nice yellow corn. That's that white corn. I get from Trader Joe. I don't know if you've seen the Trader Joe video before this come out. The corn at Trader Joe. Y'all saw it I bought. It's so sweet. It's amazing. I love it. But anyway, y'all. Let me close the video out. If you like this video, please share, please comment, please subscribe. Please follow my other social media account, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch TV, Pinterest, and OldSchoolSoulFood.com. Remember the hashtag 2022? Helping others with a purpose. Old School Soul Food. Until next time, have a blessed Old School Soul Food Day, and I will see y'all in the next video. Have a happy, blessed Sunday. Love y'all. Bye.